My name is John David Dalton, and uh, I'm doing a presentation over uh, benchmarking, um, and so I'll get into that. All right. Um, I wanted to do a talk about benchmarking because um, right after JSConf EU, I got into trying to benchmark my own framework, and I noticed I noticed there was a uh, a lack of, of good quality JavaScript benchmarks for framework code or for uh, just snippets in general. Um, and so I, I started looking at uh, task speed, um, slick speed, um, and uh, the, the popular benchmarks like uh, V8 Suite, uh, SunSpider, uh, and Kraken, and, and looking to see you know, how they measured uh, JavaScript performance. And uh, what I found along the way was that uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of problems um, with measuring JavaScript performance and, and getting a, a, a good idea of the, the actual performance. So um, let's get into it. Um, the, the main ones I, I looked at were, were SunSpider, Kraken, and V8. Um, I also looked at uh, Dromeo, which is I'll, I'll cover in the next one. Um, these benchmarks are running synthetic, bench, uh, synthetic uh, speed tests. So they're, they're doing um, tasks like looking at like a, a 3D matrix or doing some um, string manipulation. And they're, they're saying that that is representative of what applications might be doing. Um, and and will we'll, uh, gauge the speed of your, your browsers in this case. Um, but uh, Dromeo, on the other hand, is, is a different one. And it, it measures not only the same benchmarks of SunSpider and, and uh, V8 Suite, but also has DOM tests. Um, DOM tests are important um, because, for example, IE8 or IE9 uh, performs very well in some of the synthetic benchmarks uh, like SunSpider, but is, is one of the worst uh, performance-wise on DOM manipulation. Um, and so having relevant and meaningful benchmarks uh, accessible to those guys, the, the developers for IE, would have, would have helped them maybe pinpoint to narrow down more meaningful benchmarks in their own uh, browser tests. So I'm a uh, co-developer on jsperf.com. Um, how many people have used jsperf? Awesome. Great. So I make the thing that makes this work. Um, which is a, a benchmark framework called Benchmark.js. So, I'll be right there, Benchmark.js.com. Um, what I, I, as I was looking at those other solutions, um, I, I took it apart, uh, rewrote the the underlying code from JSPerf from scratch, and I wanted to make like the most thorough benchmarking framework for JavaScript. And this runs in almost anything. It should support Safari 2.00 to IE 10 preview to Node, Norwal, Ringo, Rhino. All of your bases uh, should be covered. Um, so let's get to this. There's also uh, a small project I started working on called xstats.js, which is uh, JSPerf t tests uh, little snippets of JavaScript. And usually it's you start the timer, you do the snippet, then you, you, you end the timer. Um, but this is more of a passive benchmarking tool. This allows you to, to monitor the frames per second, the memory usage in certain browsers that support uh, monitoring the memory, and, and a little millisecond timer there too. Um, and this is a rewrite of something that uh, Mr. Doob did um, but he used a canvas element, and mine's using just raw HTML to, like, there are LI elements there, um, to render that, so it's taking away less from the actual application you're trying to benchmark. Um, in mobile devices, especially if you've got canvas on the page, um, you're eating away at the performance that you're actually trying to measure. So that's a, a passive approach there. And um, there's, there's basically, there's a few patterns when you, when you benchmark things. Um, the most common one is uh, you have a while loop, you start a timer, you have, let's say you're counting down 100 executions, and then you, uh, you end your timer, and then you subtract the difference and get, get a millisecond count. Um, and that's done in things like um, slick speed, uh, task speed, sun spider, uh, nodes, benchmarks. Um, Basically, it's the most common and, and probably the, the worst kind of benchmark to do. Um, 
because, because of their fixed iterations, it means as hardware and as your environments are getting faster, eventually you're going to get a lot of zero millisecond record, uh, uh, readings. And zero milliseconds, you can't do anything with that. I mean, there's no way to compare zero to zero. So um, that is the major flaw with, with doing it this way. But there's another pattern, and this is the one that uh, Dromeo uses, and this is also what V8 Suite uses. Um, they basically run a test for one second, um, repeatedly for one second, um, and then calculate the operations per second uh, and do it that way. And that gives you a better read, but it's still not quite there because they're forcing all browsers to run this, this test for a, one second. And if you're doing especially small tests that are, are, you're testing something that executes a lot of times, you're going to end up choking up uh, the browser and locking it up. Um, when you're running this. And so what I, what I, one of the things I learned whenever I was developing Benchmark JS is that um, you actually don't need to run a test for one second. One second was, was something that they added for um, IE's poor uh, timer resolution, which I'll get into in another slide. But basically, it can only, it can only measure 15, about 15 milliseconds um, for the older IEs. Um, and uh, the newer ones, like what, four milliseconds, the IE9? Um, and so whenever you put that into a formula to figure out the, the, how long you need to run a test to get a percentage uncertainty of like 1%, it ends up being about 750 milliseconds. And so most, most of these things just run for one second. Um, but if you, if you apply that to working browsers, normal browsers that have a one millisecond resolution, um, you, you only really need to run a test for 50 milliseconds. And so, what, what that allows you to do is that with, with tests like um, V8 Suite and uh, even SunSpider, they, they run these tests multiple times and then they perform st uh, st uh, statistical analysis on them. Um, and what, what this allows you to do is, because I run the test for a, a smaller amount of time, only 50 milliseconds, I'm able to run more samples of that test and then that will help me reduce the margin of error of the end result. Uh, so that's that's something that they could, they could actually tweak there. So a big problem I see with, or, or something I've seen with, um, and these, these are actual URLs you can visit um, there to see this, this test, is context. Um, a lot of times they'll see, developers will see the, the green result or the red result and make like an instant snap decision. Wow, one is totally better than the other. And I, I, I hope that you guys take some time to just step back and go, well, wait a minute, that's, you know, that's 538 million um, uh, per second. I mean, that's crazy fast. And the slowest is, is 12 million uh, operations a second. That's still crazy fast. Uh, you're not going to be bad either way if you use either one of them. So just kind of pay attention to the operations per second and, and not necessarily just which one is being, you're being told is the fastest. Um, so there's another thing that goes into context, and that is consistency and reproducible, being able to reproduce um, results consistently. In, in this case, you'll notice it's the exact same test done three times, and the, the end result, they vary a little, but the, the system is able to detect that and say, hey, these are all statistically indistinguishable from each other. Um, and so it says, hey, they're all the fastest. And that's another reason why you don't necessarily need to get hung up on the actual operations per second, because they'll vary about 5% um, from test to retest. And I, that's been pretty consistent, um, even into like mobile browsing on, on mobile Safari. It's, and then on IE, I noticed that if I increased it from three times to, uh, let's see, to more than that even, like this is an empty test, so that's dead code removal and whatever. But you can see that the result still says it's, they're very close. And that's because it's, it's uh, got a larger sample size, a lower margin of error. And you can see the margin of error there is a 0.44, 0.73, 0.06, or a 0.46. Um, and so using a, a formula to be able to detect the statistical significance between results, you're able to get a consistent read every time. And that's important. Um, there's one issue. I'll back up one slide here. There's actually a, a Firefox trace monkey bug that has an issue with repeating 
code blocks and getting gradually slower results. Um, and so there was a, a nice workaround with that where I had to access the window object, manipulate a variable between each test. Um, so far, Firefox has been the one that's had the most uh, engine problems trying to get a bead on performance. So why is reproducing results important? Well, this is, this is uh, SunSpider's uh, result here. And you can see, this is, I, I took this in my mobile phone and I ran it. I ran the same test twice for the browser. And you can see there, it says my browser, is, there's a significant difference between my browser and my browser. And that's, that's incorrect. Um, and this is what browser vendors are using to, to, to tweak their stuff. I mean, this is, this is so bad. Um, if we go in here, you'll actually notice there's code, there's, there's, there's bugs in their actual formula for calculating significance of results. You'll see there, there's a typo uh, there, and they're actually using an incorrect formula. Um, whenever I was uh, investigating how to do benchmarking, it, the hardest part was finding formulas and finding accurate formulas. And uh, I don't know statistics naturally. I mean, I I'm, I'm came from a multimedia background, so I had to do a lot of research um, and, and try to figure out how this is done. And it was surprising. You get into these little things like, um, for example, uh, when you're comparing rates, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a thing called a, a geometric mean, which is something that V8 uh, Suite uses for theirs. And then there's, there's, a, um, there's a harmonic mean. And when you're dealing with rates, in this case operations per second, the harmonic mean is preferred. But uh, Dromeo, it, it deals with rates, but it uses the geometric mean. So you get these slightly slanted views of performance um, because their, their formulas aren't quite correct. So getting down to the issue back uh, where it was uh, IE's timer resolution, where it's 15 milliseconds versus 1 millisecond versus 4 milliseconds on different environments, how do you get a consistent resolution? Um, and what I found was that you can, you can actually expose the Java's nanosecond timer. So you can get nanosecond-ish uh, resolution in the browser just by doing this tiny little Java app. Basically, I'm just exposing the method. And so now, um, all browsers that support Java, and this is why JSPerf, you'll see your little Java icon power up there um, if you're using JSPerf, and it's because we, by default, uh, if this is in the page, uh, Benchmark JS will use the nanosecond timer. And it's not quite nanosecond resolution because um, there's, there's a cost of communicating between JavaScript and Java, but it's still better than the 15 millisecond issue of IE, and it's still better, it's still better than a millisecond uh, resolution. So it gives you a better, more consistent way to do that, and it keeps the, the tests fast in different environments, like for IE. If without this, we would detect the default time and it would say 750 milliseconds, and that just clugs along on your benchmarks. So I mentioned formulas, and this is gross um, and, and, and really boring, but there's, there's all kinds of formulas that go into uh, figuring out statistical significance and, and meaningful information to your benchmarks and data. And so, for example, there's the mean, there's the variance, there is the sample uh, devi standard deviation, there's the standard error of the mean. I mean, all of this stuff is, is, is useful, and you, can, you end up getting that, that nice display on JSPerf where it shows you the operations per second, your margin of error, and then it's able, based with all these formulas, be able to tell the statistical significance of uh, one result versus another. And this is where it goes here uh, for the, the statistical significance. Um, and what was interesting is how I mentioned before that the formula I'm using is something called a uh, two-sample t-test. Um, and it, it's great on paper, and it's something that uh, uh, SunSpider uses, and I'm, I'm sure some other ones use. But I, I noticed that in real life, whenever you're comparing JavaScript performance, that it was way too sensitive. And as you saw with the, uh, the SunSpider result where it said I was significantly faster than myself, um, that's because this, this formula is, is really sensitive. And so I threw in um, a 5% wiggle room there. And that, that seems to be very consistent across browsers. So that's, that's something to consider. 
Um, like I said, I don't learn. I, I didn't learn a lot of uh, this stuff like naturally. I mean, I had to 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 do a lot of research, and I I, I really dug the the videos on Khan Academy. Like, if you need to learn something, and this was the standard era of the mean, and he just spells it out really nice. And so that was I, I use that. I recommend that you guys could check that out. So what are the gotchas of benchmarking? And so there was a lot of drama with IE9 and SunSpider. Uh, there was uh, accusations going back and forth, and are they cheating or not? And it just turned out to be dead code removal. Um, and that's something you have to consider. Like, I would say the majority of the benchmarks on JSPerf are probably bad benchmarks. Um, and it's because making good benchmarks is hard. Um, and I took care of the, the part of measuring the actual performance, but now it's up to developers and, and everyone else to kind of make really good benchmarks. So some of the issues you can have are uh, dead code removal. So like before where I had that, that empty block here, that's dead, that, that could be dead code removal. I mean, that's basically just running nothing. Um, and so that, you have to be careful of benchmarking stuff like that because then if, you're, if your engine is optimized to remove that stuff, then it's going to perform faster than something that's not optimized to remove that. Um, then there's other issues where you have like long running tasks like crank, uh, crankshaft can kick in and you'll see the, the performance results change there. Or for example, Opera has query selector all but it caches its result. And so since this benchmark is based on repeating things to get operations per second, it's, you're getting a cached result. So there's, there's considerations there. Um, and you just need to be aware of your actual environment. There's also uh, reasons why, for example, Dromeo isn't as preferred as Kraken is because um, it does, it has all of its tests in a closure and then it accesses variables on the global. And when it does that, there's a performance hit with Firefox. Um, and so they, they don't prefer that test. They want to show it on local variables because it makes them you know, look better. So um, this, you, you have to keep that in mind with this, this kind of testing too. Um, I provide API so you can do local tests, but by default, you're, you're going from a closure to the local, the, the global variables. So keep that in mind too whenever you're, you're doing that. It, it affects your, your stuff. Okay. And so, um, questions? Anyone? Nothing. You? Yeah. Um, given the talk you saw yesterday on IDs, uh, just the time compilation, the hand compilation, uh -huh. does that affect the length of time you have to test these? You have to run these tests to get a reliable result? I, I, I missed the actual talk on that. Um, there, they, this has to do with, with time or resolution. And, and basically, if you run um, the new date and the new date, what's the smallest amount of time in there that you can? That you can read, um, and that's how I find the minimum the minimum resolution. Um, and in this case, I do it in the for loop until you get a difference in time. Um, and with IE nine, I'm told it's it's four milliseconds now. And I, I actually don't have to worry about it because my script detects that the minimum time. So that that's really what it would detect on on the run speed. Um, the the long running test I run on JSPerf I run them for five seconds just so I can get more of a sample size. So it usually ends up being about 100, which is above and beyond most benchmarks. I think uh, Dromeo does five, and SunSpider does 10. So having that bigger size just reduces the margin of error. But I, I don't know if that, that, would, that should not affect the, the length the benchmark runs. It, it, it'll affect the overall performance, though. So. Cool. Yes? Yeah, that I, I, I did. I, I used to, I went into all of that nano and micro benchmarking on should I use new date, should I use date now, should I use get time, uh, all, and it doesn't matter. It's, it's so tiny that it's, they're, using one versus the other is, is statistically indistinguishable um, from them. In fact, uh, there's, there's some benchmarks that, you know, try to calibrate out um, the cost and the, the overhead of the, the iteration loop, like the while loop you're actually having to do and the function con and, getting, and entering the execution context. But I found that 
um, whenever you subtract that calibration cost from your end result, you actually get a higher margin of error. So it swallows any of the accuracy you were hoping to gain by, by, by calibrating out that stuff. So in the end, it's, it's better to just leave it in. It's not a noticeable difference. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the, that's Math Matthias is, is the, the main drive behind ma maintaining that, um, and that's just his design choice. It's simple. It's really just, he wanted it to be very, very simple to do. So, cool. Um, all right. Is that it? Okay.